Hello, in this video I want to show you how you can detect COVID-19 from chest x-ray images. I found this GitHub repository where they regularly upload chest x-ray images. Right now I would like to download this entire repository to obtain the images. In here, we can find metadata.csv, which is an Excel file giving me information for each individual image that is contained in the dataset. First of all, I can see that most of the images in this dataset belong to COVID-19 cases. And there is actually only two images which refer to a healthy patient. Therefore, we are facing several problems. First of all, the dataset is relatively small considering the complexity of the problem we would like to analyze. Next, it is highly unbalanced, so we have actually much more COVID-19 images than healthy images. Now we can have a look into the images and here we can see that they are quite heterogeneous, especially when we check the details of those images we can see that almost each image has a different dimension. So we will definitely have to resize somehow. And one problem that could occur out of practical reasons is that patients where COVID-19 is suspected might have been sent to a particular facility and they have been imaged using a particular machine while other patients with SARS, for example, might have been measured with a different machine. So it could easily happen that if we train a model using this data set, that it will only learn to detect the differences between different X-ray machines or different ways these images have been pre-processed. We have to recognize that each of these images originate from a certain publication. And in each publication, the authors might have used a different compression or image processing pipeline. As a result, when we're actually trained on these images, the classification accuracy could still be good, but only because of the artifact that the algorithm learned to distinguish different X-ray machines. So this is a problem termed overfitting. In general, overfitting will be the biggest problem that we are facing in this data set because it has only 162 elements. And at the same time, I would suspect that we actually need a fairly complex deep neural net in order to facilitate this complex classification task. Now there are different methods to approach such a problem. First of all, these are images and images can be mathematically altered in order to artificially increase the data set. This method is called data augmentation or image augmentation. Next, we should make use of a method called transfer learning, which means that we first train a neural net on a different data set, but ideally a similar but different training data set while looking for a data set that is different yet tries to solve a similar task. I stumbled upon this Kegel competition where they want to detect pneumonia and x-ray images. Therefore, I logged in with my Kegel account and downloaded this data set. Once the download finished and you unzipped, you will find a folder with these contents. First, there is a training folder containing a folder with images of healthy, normal patients. And there is a second folder with x-ray images of pneumonia patients. Again, all these images have different dimensions. So first of all, I would like to resize these images. For this task, I wrote a Python script. This Python script you can actually execute using AI developer, but as I will also need the computing power from my graphics card, I will anyway run AI developer from script. Therefore, I will now also execute this Python script uh, using Spider. 
This script first creates a folder with the original name and adds an underscore res, which stands for resized. Next, it looks for all the contents that are within the original folder and then loads the images, resizes them and saves the images to the new folder. Let's run the script. Once the script finished, you will find these additional folders, which now contain the resized images. So here you can see each and every single image is now at a size of 360 by 360 pixels. Now we have to go through the same steps for the testing and the validation set. I already copied and pasted the identical script, which I will now also execute. Again, when the script finished, you will find these folders with underscore res, and we perform the same operation for the validation set. Okay, now we finished preparing the data, so we can now start AI Developer. As I said, I will run AI Developer from script, which allows me to use my graphics card. So when you start AI Developer, you will see that the device type now is GPU, and here is written the GPU um, it is accessing. Now let us insert the training data for normal and pneumonia and select convert to grayscale as all these images are grayscale images. So this is training data. As you can see, there is a class imbalance. Therefore, I would like to shuffle the data set for each training iteration. And I just use 1,200 images. So AI developer will sample random 1,200 images from the available 3,875 images in this case. Next, we also want to insert a validation set. And when I had a look into the folder for the validation set, I figured out that it is very small. So, and if we think, um, Let's say we have a validation set consisting of 10 images. In this case, if our model does one mistake, we don't have an accuracy of 100% anymore, but of 90%. As you can see, in this case, we would have an error for the determination of the validation accuracy of 10%. And in order to get a better tracking of the actual validation accuracy, I want to use this test set, which contains more images. Next, we have to define the model we want to use. In the end, we want to apply this model for the COVID-19 data set, which is really small. Another approach to avoid overfitting is to just use a very small model. Therefore, I would like to use the Linet 5 model, which has dropout layers, because this will also allow me later on to increase the dropout, which is also possible even within AI developer. I would like to have a final image size of 300 pixels and we can use some image augmentation. So this data set is relatively large and I suspect that my graphics card will not be able to fit 128 images. So I will use a smaller batch size. Um, so I did an error here. This should be 0 0.60. And now we can check the example images. Now we only have to define the path for the model we want to save and define a name for our model. So this is model number one. We will fit a LeNet5 with dropout and the model will accept uh, image sizes of 300 by 300 pixels and the model has two classes. Enter. Now we can initialize 
and it tells me that the data set will require 1000 megabytes of RAM. I have that amount of RAM available, so I can just go ahead and start the fitting process. Otherwise, I would need to uncheck this option. If you would like to see more information during the training, you can go to edit and hit verbose. And after that, you will see the time that is required for the different operations and also some progress bar during training. Now let's also plot the accuracy and validation accuracy during training. And now I would like to let this run for a while. Okay, now I am back after quite a number of epochs. And as we can see, the, the accuracy is already higher than the validation accuracy. So um, I would actually prefer to try and test um, this model here to a different data set. And I found that there is actually a very similar data set uh, available on this website called Chexpert. And this data set consists of chest x-ray images. Down here, you have to insert your credentials, email address and name, and then they will send you an email containing links to first the original data set, which is 440 gigabytes in size, and also a downsampled one, which is 11 gigabytes in size. I decided to download the downsampled data set When the download finished, you will find a zip file, which you have to unzip. And then within this folder, you will find a folder containing images for training and another folder containing images for validation. Furthermore, there are two Excel files, which contain information about the individual images that are contained within these folders. Again, I wrote a Python script, which will allow me to prepare the data set. In this Python script, you first have to indicate whether you want to work on the training data or on the validation data. Next, the Excel file will be read and only those rows are selected which point towards X-ray images that are acquired in the frontal direction. This data set actually contains multiple different diagnoses, but I just need the diagnosis no finding and pneumonia, which is why I define these classes. If you want to obtain all the classes, you could run this line instead of this one but I don't want this, so I just want to get those images that refer to no finding and pneumonia. Next, the folder is created, which is called training underscore two or validation underscore two. And next for each class, the script will look up which images belong to this class and then create a folder for this class to finally load the particular image, resize it, and save the resized image. Now we can let the script run. After you run the script once for training and once for validation, you will get new folders called train underscore two and valid underscore two. And when you have a look into these folders, you will find that there is now a folder for no finding containing images and another folder for pneumonia containing images. Let's have a look at the details of those images in order to check the dimensions. Now all the images are 360 by 360 pixels, while the initial data actually um, contained images of very different dimensions. For example, this one has a dimension of 389 by 320. This one has 390 by 320. Now we want to load this data into AI Developer. 
apparently there are very few images for testing i would actually like to have larger data sets so i drop these lines again remove selected and instead i would like to load the actual training data next i would like to decide for a particular model so let's have a look at our past training I decided that I want to use this particular model to check it against this other data set. And this model has the index number 33. So let us load this particular model. And now we can apply it to this data set. Now I can see that the accuracy on this other data set did drop down to 0 0.6, which is a bit disappointing. When having a look at the confusion matrix, we can see that the model has a clear preference to predict the label zero, which means no finding. In conclusion, one can say that using this data set from Kaggle and this particular model will not result in a model that is robust enough to be applied on another data set. Therefore, I would now like to try it the other way around by first training on the Chexpert data set. This data set is larger and I therefore hope to obtain a more robust model. First of all, we can remove the Kaggle data set. We already inserted the training data set for the Chexpert. Unfortunately, this validation data set contains only very few images. Probably it is a much better idea to already use the Kaggle data set in order to obtain the validation accuracy after each training iteration by checking against this Kaggle data set. Therefore, I would now like to remove this validation data and instead load the Kaggle data set. Here I would like to use 4000 random images in each training iteration and for validation 100 images are sufficient. In the prior training, we have seen that despite using the relatively small Lynette 5 model, there was still an overfitting, which is indicated by a training accuracy that is higher than the validation accuracy and actually a drop of the validation accuracy over here during training. Therefore, I would prefer to have a stronger regularization during training. This can be facilitated using dropout. The chosen model has three dropout layers with default values of 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. I would now like to use higher dropout values for each layer. To do this, I check this box and now I can insert the dropout values I would like to use for each dropout layer, which is 0 0.6 for each layer. After defining the path where the models should be saved and a name for the model, I can click initialize to start the fitting process. Here we can see the amount of RAM that is required to load this data set. Again, I have enough RAM and I can just click start fitting. Okay, now I am back at my local machine. I was training the model on a different, more powerful machine than I copied the architecture and the final best models, as well as the meta file to my local computer. Now I can continue from there. 
So as you can see um, at the beginning, we found that the validation accuracy increased dramatically, but then there was a, a drop in validation accuracy again. But after that, it recovered and even became better than, uh, than at this peak. So now I would like to only show the models that were actually saved. And now we can also have a look at the validation loss. The Cyan dots indicate the validation loss and the best model is the one with number 520. So now I would actually like to know which class this model would predict if I showed its images of COVID-19 patients. To do so, um, let's first download the most recent version of this GitHub repository. When the download has finished and you unzip the file, you will find these files and folders. And again, I prepared a Python script which will allow me to convert the, the images which are of very different dimension as I showed before. Um, but this time we can actually use AI developer to perform the data preparation step. So let's go to AI developer and the Python tab. We can copy this path to open the file. And over here we need to specify the working directory. The working directory is this. So we just insert it and now we can run the script. After it is done, you will find this new folder containing folders for the different diagnoses, including COVID-19. One thing I would like to do is to predict the class of these images using the model we already have. And next, I would also like to use the model that we have to continue training using these images and also these images. Um, so actually, the, the other classes provide less images, like no finding, we just have one image. ARDS, four images. So as ARS is the folder with the second most images. Therefore, I would like to select only two images to move them to a separate validation set and insert those two images. Next, I want to do the same for COVID-19. This time I would like to move 15 images into the validation folder. So this means all those folders that we have in here will now be used for training. While those folders here is still our validation data. So as I said, Step number one is to check which classes the model would predict given this data here. So I insert COVID-19 and maybe also no finding. Okay, and no finding is class zero. COVID-19, let's say it's class one because it's more similar to pneumonia. And we don't want to shuffle but use all the available images. And next we would like to assess one particular model, let's say the best model that we found during the last fitting process, the model of index 520, and let's apply it. Okay, so this looks actually rather promising. Um, the single image that we have of a healthy patient was actually classified as a healthy one so this is nice and down here we have a slight trend that the model 
tends to predict pneumonia, but this could be a coincidence since the model never saw images of COVID-19 patients, but only saw pneumonia. To verify that this is actually coincidence, I could also just uh, load another model. Let's say this one, update plots. And here we can see that it's almost 50-50. Oh, also, also this model actually prefers to classify COVID-19 patients into the class of pneumonia patients. And now I would like to optimize the model of index 520 uh, to distinguish images from COVID-19 patients from patients that had another illness. That means I would like to pool images of ARDS patients, SARS patients, and streptococcus patients. I would like to leave out pneumocystis at no finding, since no finding means healthy, and there is also just a single image, and pneumocystis also just has a single image. Therefore, again, I would like to pool uh, images contained in this folder, this folder, and this folder, and try to train a model that is able to distinguish these images from images from COVID-19 patients. To do so, I now still need to load the corresponding data. So as I said, I don't want to use this file. Uh, this is used now used for training. These are also all used for training. So let's say COVID-19 is now class one, while SRS, Streptococcus, and ARDS is class zero. We can now see that in class zero, we have 19 images in total. So in order to create a class balance, I would like to also use 19 images, 19 random images from COVID-19 in each training iteration. Now we only need to load also the validation data which are only those two folders. So this is validation and we don't want to shuffle. Creating um, this artificial class balance um, by putting the 19 here is actually very important because here in this case, it could happen that if I trained using all the 85 images versus the other 19 images, the model could find the trivial solution, which is to figure out that COVID-19 just appears much more often. And then I would quickly get a very high validation accuracy because then it would also say, okay, all of these 15 validation images that are COVID-19 are predicted correctly. Only those two here that are actually SARS and the other class would be classified then incorrectly. COVID-19 is class one. So now we can check the data overview box. We can see that we have 19 images uh, in each training iteration of uh, class zero, which combines SARS, Streptococcus and ARDS and 19 images for COVID-19. In the validation set, we actually have a class imbalance because we have only two images for SRS and 15 images of COVID-19. Now we want to specify the model we want to fit. So as I said, we don't want to build a new model, but we want to load and continue an existing model, namely the model with index 520. So I double click it and I select the normalization method, which has been used, which is division by 255. Now I would like to come to the most important regularization techniques, which are that we freeze the dense layers and this model that we are about to choose has two dense layers so i can just click this initialize or fit model button and stop after model initialization 
So down here we now find the summary and apparently there are one and two dense layers down here which I would like to keep trainable. Actually there is another dense layer here but it has a, an enormous amount of parameters so I would like to keep it frozen for the beginning. Furthermore down here we find this checkbox which allows us to also determine new dropout rates and if we have a look back into the history we see that at the last training already there was quite a tendency for overfitting so I would be now very suspicious also considering that we have so few images to prevent overfitting therefore I would prefer to use a much higher dropout rate of let's say 0 0.8 in each dropout layer up here you can find the number of dropout layers and the dropout rates for each layer so currently there is 0 0.6 for each layer and I would like to switch this to 0 0.8. Now we just need to determine a path. And now we can start to actually fit this model. Considering that the model appears to not to learn anything, I would like to reduce the amount of dropout by only a little bit. Okay, probably I can reduce the amount of dropout even further. Okay, let's reduce the dropout rate again. And I apply this change at the next epoch. So here you can see that the dropout rates of the model were changed to, to these values. Okay, so apparently reducing the amount of dropout is not a good idea because it will only cause overfitting, which means the validation accuracy reduces. Um, so in the end, um, these three models were the best models I was able to obtain with 70% accuracy. Okay, let's terminate the fitting process. And let's go to the history tab and load the prior training history. So here we can see that there were these three epochs with a high validation accuracy. We can also check that it only shows us the models that were actually saved and actually all of those three models were saved so now we can use them to assess the validation data by just clicking here model 41 and hitting update plots so as you can see from the confusion matrix the two available images for SARS are predicted correctly. Also 10 of 15 images of COVID-19 were predicted correctly, but also five images were predicted incorrectly. And here we can have a look at those particular images. Down here, you have a table with information about the accuracy and also F1 score precision recall is listed. And furthermore, you can plot the rock out curves if you like. 
but all these curves will be very imprecise right now because the number of data points is very low. In general, this model will not be very useful because of the lack of data. I hope you liked this tutorial and maybe you're now inspired to use AI Developer for biomedical purposes. Bye bye.